This real-time image of the sun cloaked with clouds is being projected by the same optical method used for the simplified but enhanced Schlieren photography imagery of gases released from a barbecue lighter and gas ignition. Our high-powered optical device is nothing more than a small flat mirror. Hello, I'm your host Dan Rojas. In a previous video, I showed you how to do an easier method of Schlieren photography using just one parabolic mirror. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do Schlieren photography and all you need is a little tiny mirror chip. This image behind me, that's an image of the sun cast on our wall from 100 feet away. In the back of our truck are some small mirror fragments from a previous project. I selected three pieces varying in shape and size. The largest mirror is rectangular shaped and the two smaller mirrors consist of a triangle and a square. At a very close distance, all three mirrors reflect the same intensity of light and as expected reflect their true shape and size. But as the target is moved away from the reflecting mirrors and the focal length is extended, something amazing begins to occur. All three reflections become round, and even though the mirrors are of different sizes, all three reflections project the same diameter circle. The only difference being the larger mirror's image of the sun is brighter than that of the smaller mirrors. This results from the pinhole effect. Pinhole photography requires no optical lens. A dark room or box has a small hole placed in one side allowing light to enter. Any scenery outside in bright light will cast an inverted image of the scene on the opposing wall inside. The light flip and focusing for pinhole photography occurs when the diameter of the hole or aperture is roughly 100 times smaller than that of the focal length to the focusing wall inside. The small mirrors perform in a similar manner, but because the direct image of the sun is very bright, the imaging surface does not require a dark light tight enclosure. Also, because our sun is round in shape, the projected images from the mirrors are also round. If our sun were the shape of a triangle, then the projected image would be that of a triangle. This would be a great imaging method to use for the next solar eclipse. Clouds are far enough away from the ground to simulate a weak solar eclipse. When cloud cover is present, all three mirrors projecting an image of the sun also defines images of the cloud cover. While the smaller mirrors images are dimmer, they are sharper in detail. This is equivalent to a camera's f-stop or aperture. Professionally trained photographers understand the importance of a camera's aperture. This is what the aperture ring inside of a camera looks like. When the aperture is wide open, more light collected from the primary lens exposes the film or digital sensor producing a brighter image. When the ring is rotated closed, less light enters and the exposure time or shutter speeds need to be longer. Since the aperture is after the lens, the depth of field expands and the focusing requires less precision. For traditional pinhole photography, the finer the edges of the circular hole, the sharper the image. A round mirror would be optimal, but due to the extreme focal length and super high intensity of light, any shape works. By driving our truck further away from the target screen, the image of the sun gets larger in exchange for a dimmer image. The longer the focal length, the more the image's light is dispersed over a larger area, just like any traditional zoom lens. Our 1 inch by 1 inch mirror is 100 feet away or roughly 30 meters from our focusing wall, so the focal length to aperture ratio is 1200 to 1, much further than traditional pinhole photography. The distance the mirror is away from the focusing surface is considered the focal length similar to optical telescopes. For Schlieren imaging, the 1200 to 1 ratio provides a large image work area and amazing results. Working 8 to 12 feet from the target screen, this bottle of rubbing alcohol's evaporating vapors are easily imaged. You can even make vapor rings. Removing the cap from a 2 liter bottle of soda reveals the carbon dioxide expansion. Open flames and high heat sources provide the most dramatic imaging. This simple Schlieren setup is sensitive enough to pick up the temperature differences on my hands after rubbing them together. The image of the sun quickly moves across our wall because the longer the focal length, the more dramatic the leverage to the axis is. A sun tracker would be a good idea, but you can move this manually every two to three minutes. So with this incredibly bright light source entering our office, you may be considering an interior solar cooker by adding a Fresnel lens or parabolic reflector. Keep in mind that power is a net energy concentrated from the sun and is determined by the surface area of the light source. Because our mirror is only one inch square, you would need 1,550 of them to fit inside one square meter. 
and one square meter of sunlight has a realistic value of 1,000 joules or 1,000 watts. So the reflecting power of this mirror is less than one watt. That's why I'm comfortable putting my hand in front of the focal point. A larger 12 inch mirror is too big to produce a good image of the sun at these shorter focal lengths and maintains its reflective shape to some extent. For sun imaging with a mirror like this, you would need to be over 200 feet away. For solar heat concentration, this 12 inch by 12 inch mirror is 144 times more powerful than our small one inch mirror and has a reflection potential from the sun of roughly 93 watts actually closer to 80 watts considering this is a second surface mirror, but it is well matched to the size of the Fresnel lens and can easily burn stuff indoors. Small first surface mirrors work best for this concept as the sunlight does not have to pass twice through the glass reducing the optical aberration, but a second surface mirror like the one in your house will work just fine. The larger a flat mirror is, the more likely it is to distort from heat and flex tension. In future videos, I'll show you in detail what the difference is between a first surface and a second surface mirror. I'll also be showing you how to metalize different objects, including foam. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.